Welcome back to BNB Sports Zone. Chased down by Beal in the corner for three, gets fouled and hits. Welcome to DC. Walker tied him out. You know when you're at the USA Cup, you're taking a slight I'm taking a slight What's good everyone, it's your boy Nazi with another video for the channel. Welcome back to the Envy Sports Zone. And I'm back with your day 12 training camp recap for your Washington Commanders. But before even getting to what happened on the field in Ashburn, Virginia for the Commanders, I want to get into the biggest piece of news that broke today regarding the Chicago Bears, but potentially, potentially could involve the Washington Commanders. And that is Roquan Smith. Stud linebacker from the Chicago Bears, stud middle linebacker requesting a trade from Chicago. And let me let me start by saying this. I was a Chicago resident for four years. My time in Chicago pretty much overlaps with the Roquan Smith's time in Chicago, right? And of course, I'm a diehard Commanders fan. Commanders, go after Roquan Smith. 6'1", 229 pound linebacker, only 25 years old, just, just entering his athletic prime. Last year, he st played and started in all 17 games, and per PFF, had an interception, 111 solo tackles, which ranked 6th in the entire NFL, and had 12 tackles for loss. Smith has toppled 100 total tackles, has topped 100 total tackles in all four of his seasons in the NFL. His PFF grade wasn't super high last year, I think it was only 47.8, but at the end of the day, he's a solid middle linebacker. He's been that for his entire career. Just now entering his athletic prime once again. And could be even better if he moves to the outside, right? If Cole Holcomb, if if he is what we think he is as the Mike linebacker for this team, Rokon Smith could play on the outside and it could be a Rokon Smith and Cole Holcomb show, right? Also, the Bears are in a complete rebuild, right? Whether they want to admit it or not. They want to trade away any, any asset on that team that could be worth something. And Rokon Smith is definitely a big asset for that team. And I think the commanders would do wonders, wonders, right? Ron Rivera keeps talking about how this is his third year, right? This is when we're supposed to make the third year leap. We went all in and getting Carson Wentz, right? We added some pieces here and there throughout the offseason. If this is truly the all-in season, why not go after Roquan Smith and make your defense even more formidable than it's been really the last couple of years? Also, I know people are going to say this as a counter. Oh, the Bears GM, Ryan Poles, the new GM, who, you know, I I think he could be good in this league. But the new GM talked about how, oh, he's not trading Roquan Smith. There's no way. There's no way. It's just all talk. How many times in sports have we seen GMs talk about how they're not going to trade away players and they end up trading those players, whether they be in the NFL or any other sport, right? Just last week, we, we went through the similar situation with Juan Soto. And you could even go back to the Russell Wilson situation. Seahawks GM saying, oh, we're not going to trade away Russell Wilson. And they obviously do that, trade away him to the Denver Broncos in the offseason. So I, I don't buy that. And then there's the argument, oh, man, Nazi, you know we're going to have to give up a lot to get a Roquan Smith. We're de definitely going to have to give up a player or two, maybe a draft pick. Ideally, I would like to run Payne in the draft situation or the trade situation, but Pedro Smith mentioned or brought up a good point during the last live stream about how the Bears are in a rebuild. Why would they want to get back a draw Payne who they're just going to have to pay big money for the next offseason, right? So that doesn't really make too much sense. But I think realistically, we're talking about a Jamin Davis second round pick and maybe a fourth or fifth round pick as well in the trade package. And honestly, maybe some fans are not comfortable with that. I am comfortable with that because Rokon Smith, once again, is a great linebacker. He's not only a guy that could fill... The linebacker spot, which all of us fans have been clamoring for to be solidified for years and years, he will not only fill that position, he will go above and beyond in, in making that position a strength, in my opinion, on this team. And yes, he'd likely be on the books for 16 to $18 million per year on his next contract. Yes. But, I mean, I don't even have to talk about the Rams. Let's talk about the Saints. How many teams like the Saints have manipulated the salary cap over the last couple of years and been able to keep players, right? Keep players that are on big money contracts 
And, and, and we see this across the NFL, right? So why can't we do that? Why can't we finally push all our cards on the table and, and really do something and stop being complacent, stop sitting sitting on our hands and stop being complacent and go after Roquan Smith. Yes, pay him big money, but at the end of the day, maybe turn a lot of that money to bonus money or, or, or make a lot of that money or the next contract that Roquan Smith is signed for, add some voidable years on that. Right? Like, why can't we do that? Why can't we, why can't we have the innovation to work around the salary cap like other teams have across the league over the last couple of years? So I don't buy the whole money argument. I don't buy the, the trade package. Oh, we're going to have to give up too much to get him argument. I don't buy the Bears GM not tr- wanting to trade him. If he, if there's the right package on the table, he's going to, he's going to, he's going to accept the deal. He's going to accept the deal. Especially with a player like Rogan Smith already requesting a trade. Right, but I'll just end with this in terms of my Roquan Smith talks. I'm tired. The last three years, yes, Ron Rivera has made some moves. Yes, he's gone after William Jackson, a Curtis Samuel. But in my opinion, we've been a little, a little too complacent when it comes to filling some of our dire needs on this team, like linebacker. Like we we gave Bobby McCain a second contract when I think a lot of us wanted an upgrade at the position at free safety. If we, again, acquire Roquan Smith, not only will we just add a player that's pretty good into the what we hope to be championship puzzle, we'll add a player that will make our linebacker group and our defense's strength once again. That's my thoughts. We went after Matt Stafford. We didn't give it, in my opinion, we didn't give enough to get a Matthew Stafford. And there have been some other guys that have come and gone, whether it be quarterback or another position, that we just haven't been willing to give a lot of compensation for and ultimately that's that, that, that's the reason why these players are not on our team and i think rokon smith hopefully he could be on our team and you guys you guys heard my opinion on it but whether it be you know all the money talk the trade talk or anything right with regards to the player i want rokon smith in dc i think he'd be a very good player for us and again he's only 25 years old 25 years old he's only gonna get better from here on out, folks, I'm good with the deal. Next piece of news that I want to get to: a Sam's Mills, or the Sam Mills the third firing. So the timing, of course, sucks. He just he and his family just celebrated his dad being his late father being inducted into the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, this weekend. So the timing definitely sucks, right? I believe he was at practice on Monday, but the news came on Tuesday that he was fired. He was let go. And honestly, Pedro and I, we talked about this on the last live stream, same wavelength in terms of this issue because we both been thinking Sam Mills should have been long gone. Should have been long gone. How do you have four first round picks and you underperform how bad that we did last season, right? Okay, Chase Young missed a good amount of the season. But what about Montez Sweat? But what about Deron Payne? What about some of the defensive interior guys that we had? Tim Settle, Matt Ioannidis. None of these guys performed last season. Besides a Jonathan Allen, right? None of these guys perform. I think Sam Mills has a huge part, a huge part to play in terms of that that underperformance last season. And it makes complete sense that Coach Rivera talked about how he let go of Sam Mills the third because of philosophical differences, right? I'm pretty sure what happened on Tuesday or Monday was just the trigger point. I think there was a lot of things boiling underneath the surface. Players, we you could. Read the reports. Some players were already frustrated with Sam Mills over the last couple months. We obviously saw the whole Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne fight or whatever you want to call it late last season. So the writing on the was definitely on the wall for Sam Mills the third. But Coach Rivera finally, finally decided to fire him. And now assistant Jeff Zganina. I can't even pronounce the name, bro. Jeff Zganina is the... Defensive line coach for us. He's been an assistant for the last two years and was promoted today. But don't be surprised if Rivera keeps bringing in some some other guys into the equation, into the coaching equation to help out our defensive line, whether it be a Ron Kerrigan who has been spotted at, at practices over the last couple of weeks or a Warren Sapp who was spotted at practice a couple of weeks ago and was actually at practice on Tuesday. So don't be surprised there. The last thing I'll say on this, this bit of news is Mr. Bite D's, Jack Del Rio, you are next. If this defense continues to underperform for the second straight year, 
or if it continues to start off slow for the third straight year. People forget in 2020, we did start off slow on our defense. If that happens, you're next. You're next. And all those boos that you heard at training camp practice at FedEx Field, including from yours truly, they're just going to get louder and louder and louder. And Coach Rivera is going to hear them. He's going to hear them. Now, with what happened on the field. So, and once again, shout out to everybody, all the beat reporters, Zach Selby, John Kahn, Matthew Peraz, everybody for all the information that I'll be diving into here. The unofficial depth chart was released today. If you guys want my full thoughts on it, go and check out the live stream, the very recent live stream with Pedro Smith. I dive more into it there. But in terms of what happened on the field, so the offense, back in pads today, wide receiver Curtis Samuel was working off to the side. Surprising. Well, he did say in an interview with Scott Abraham of Channel 7 Sports that he is going to be ready come week one. This is just all part of the plan of getting him ready, getting him ramped up in the offseason program. So he is fully ready come week one, but it is what it is. Cole Turner, as well, was on the side field, still reeling from an injury that he sustained last week during training camp practice. But in terms of guys who were practicing, De'Ami Brown was practicing. John Bates finally was on the practice field, which is lovely to see because he was... I believe ranked number two in the tight end pecking order on the depth chart right behind an injured Logan Thomas right now. So he is our projected starter come week one. Curtis Hodges was also practicing. William Jackson III was working in individual drills with the DBs, but not in full team drills. And JD McKissick was not practicing today, but it was an excused absence. So no big worries there. But um, the one piece of news I want to get to right now is for as much as people like to talk about how Cam Sims hasn't done much this offseason, he did practice pretty well today, caught a couple of nice passes in Ashburn. So, and depth chart wise, right? I think he's fourth. I believe he's fifth actually on the depth chart, fifth or sixth. So he is definitely on the roster bubble, but he's showing some good things during practice. And it is, he is our only big bodied receiver right now. So I think that goes to his advantage in terms of him making the roster if he ends up making the roster. But the biggest piece of news from what happened on the field, Carson Wentz, he looked very solid during two-minute drills, went four for six, did have a fumble, but he recovered it, and the drive ended with a super nice passing touchdown to Dax Milne, Mr. Steal Your Girl Dax Milne, and um, yeah, I mean, from all accounts, Pete Haley and others, this was Carson Wentz's best day of practice in the entire training camp period over the last two weeks. So he did some really good things. Coach Rivera talked him up during his post-practice presser as well. Talked about how Carson Wentz is getting more comfortable with the play scheme and the play calling with each passing day. And you can really see that see that out on the on the field on Friday during or Saturday during the training camp practice that DMV Sports Zone went to at FedEx Field. He did show some good things. There were some inaccurate passes that he threw, but he's been off and on over the last couple of weeks. But today... From all accounts, he's, he had a really good day. Taylor Heineke, meanwhile, did not. He had an interception, two-minute drills. That was caught by Jeremy Reeves. So, yeah, but this was definitely the Carson Wentz day. The Carson Wentz day for sure. Wide receivers-wise, Kelvin Harmon, Terry McCorm made some nice sideline catches. Jahan Dotson hauled in a deep pass down the sideline in practice as well. And I'm telling you, this it just feels like every single time I make these videos, I say the same thing. I feel like a broken record. But Jahan Dotson is going to be stuck for us, guys. He's going to be a stud for us. Even Kevin Sheehan keeps talking about how he has sources within, within the organization that keep talking about how Dotson is the best receiver on this team, period. And that includes a Terry McCorn. So I, I don't necessarily buy that, right? We haven't even seen John Dotson on the field yet. But then again, remember in 2019, we kept Terry McCorn under wraps. We didn't really know too much about him before the start of the regular season. And then he just bursted onto the scene. John Dotson could have the same similar trajectory. Um, but yeah, right tackle Sam Cosby had a nice block on William Bradley King, set up a big hole for Brian Robinson to run through through uh, in an 11 on 11 drill. So Cosby's doing really well. I mean, we saw him play really well when he was healthy last season, but it was just him suffering injury after injury that pretty much sidelined him for a good period of time. So we didn't really get to see a full season out of him of great play. But I think Sam Cosby is an upward on the upward trajectory, I think it's going to be really good for us in his second season. And Brian Robinson, I mean, he keeps pushing for reps. He keeps pushing for, rep, for reps. He might be RB1 by the end of the season. But um, Jared Patterson, speaking of RBs, was also repeatedly getting to the second level today during practice. Although he was still listed fifth on the running back depth chart, which if you guys want my full thoughts on that, again, check out the live stream with Pedro. But Dax Mill continues to impress. Mr. Still Your Girl, once again, had a super nice leaping catch in 7-on-7 seven seven drills. 
And the young tight end, Armani Rodgers, caught a nice pass in the middle of the field as well and had a nice touchdown and goal line drill. So making it even more interesting in that tight end group, which has been interesting in the last couple of weeks, whether it be a John Bates being sidelined or Logan Thomas being sidelined or a Cole Turner really showing out or a Curtis Hodges really showing out. And now Armani, Armani Rodgers is, 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 is saying something out there on the field. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how this position really pans out over the next couple of weeks. But one last interesting note, there are three players returning kicks today. Ox Erickson, Kyrick McGowan, Dex Milne, three guys that have been continuously returning kicks. But Washington added another return specialist to the squad, undrafted free agent Matt Cole from McKendree University. It'll be interesting to see if he pushes for reps at the position. Um, Alex Erickson on the depth chart was the starter at kick returner and punt returner. But yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Special teams outside of obviously the punter and the kicker, which I think are pretty solidified, Chess Way and Joey, Joey Sly, respectively. Returner is going to be interesting to, to pan out. Like I don't think Jahan Dotson is going to be returning kicks. First round pick, too valuable. People have said that. I've said that. You know, it is what it is. But Alex Erickson, whether he makes the roster, sixth receiver, seventh receiver, or a Matt Cole, or one of these guys, Dax Mill, potentially being our sixth receiver, but having that position flex that Coach Rivera keeps talking about that he wants out of players on this team. Maybe that might give him the advantage in terms of making the roster, and Alex Erickson might be on the outside looking in. Who knows? But there's a lot of questions to be answered that we're waiting to be answered over the next couple of weeks, and that's what makes football, training camp, commanders, football, all interesting. With that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. This is it for my video. You got my thoughts on Roquan Smith, on the Sam Mills firing, and training camp day 12, what we saw out there on the field. So with that being said, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the DAB Sports Zone channel. I like to post fire content like this as much as possible. Also, go follow our Twitter page at DMV Sports Zone, our Instagram page, all overcase DMV Sports Zone, and our TikTok run by Abdullah, Evan, and Noah um, at DMV Sports Zone as well. And yeah, I'll be on a couple more videos to, to end the week. I'll be on Tim's channel for sure. I'll likely be on Pedro's channel as well. So make sure you guys go check out those videos. And of course, I'll be here with the recaps, I believe, for the rest of the week. We'll see. Abdullah is on vacation, so you're going to see a lot of me. You might be tired of my face, but it is what it is. See you guys on the next one. Have a great rest of your night. Stay safe. Peace.